Welcome back, baseball family. This is a highly anticipated segment between Brad and I. We we have long discussed what documentaries we hope get made. And I'm going to caveat this by saying we have documentaries we plan to make. We, we want to make documentaries. Uh, and we're working toward that. So if you want to support us in that adventure, and if you want to get in on that, um, then you can drop us a line on Patreon. We have different tiers that will allow you to support us for five, 10 and $15 or different kind of packages. And that will enable us to not only keep doing what we're doing here, but also to make documentary films that we hope to do in the future. Anyway, there are a number of documentaries out there about baseball. We love plenty of them. However, there are some topics that are, that have gone unexplored. And Brad and I have put together a list, just three each, this day, this day, three, we limited it to three each, documentaries we would like to see made or or would maybe like to have a hand in making one day. So Brad, why don't you go ahead and give us your first one, um, documentaries you want to see. Okay, the first one is actually, I'm going to go with a docu-series, Brig. Ooh, oh, yes. Um, so <laughs> I, think, I think this would be really cool to see, um, and it's different positions and roles around a major league baseball team. Now this is not front office jobs. Like I don't, I don't care in this series. I don't care what the GM does. I don't care what the assistant GM does. I don't care what the scouts do. What I want to see is what is it like to be a relief pitcher? Right. What do they do before the games? How do they prepare? What's it like out in the dugout or out in the bullpen? Right. Like yep. you see them throwing seeds at each other and goofing around all kinds of stuff, right? Like I want to, I want to be behind a camera in the bullpen, seeing what exactly is going on, what is said. What's it like being the bullpen catcher? What is the what is the bullpen catcher's job, other than to stroke the ego of the relief pitcher while he's warming up, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, what does the bench coach do? What exactly is the bench coach's job during the, during the game? I always joked that the bench coach is the babysitter, is the dugout babysitter, right? But yeah. a bench coach does a whole lot more than that. There's a, a bench course. coach has a significant job. And then the other one I want to see is um, – actually, there's two. One of them is a clubby, a clubhouse attendant. Yep. Because that's a cool job for anybody who doesn't know. Sure. That's yeah. an awesome job. And if, if you want to work in baseball and you want to be involved but behind the scenes – look into being a clubhouse attendant because it's a great job pays really well um and then the other one i actually got to talk to somebody who had this job with the twins she was the press box receptionist Ooh! so you walk out of the you walk out of the elevator into the press area like like where like the owner's box is where the press goes to sit and all the broadcasters and she has yeah. a desk sitting right there pointing you to where you're supposed to go this woman had been with the twins for like, I want to say like 60 something years. Whoa. 50, 50 or 60. I don't remember. She was, she'd been there forever. She took it as a wow. part-time job and it just stuck. She was with them forever. Like to the point that she actually had a house down in Florida where like next to their stadium so that she could go down for spring training and participate and be around some of the team with spring training. Yeah, out of town. Yeah, I wrote a story and I'll send it over so you can read it because it was yeah, an awesome cool. interview. It was, it was a lot of fun. I talked to her for like legit like four innings when I was at the at a Twins game. It was rad. Put it so, in the show notes in the description too, so that people can see. Put the post may, yeah, maybe that. I'll oh, no, I think I'll put it on baseballtogether.com. I got to find there it. There you go. And I'll put yeah. it on baseballtogether.com and I'll put it in the show notes and uh, yeah. and maybe I'll tweet it out or something too. I don't know, just so you guys yeah. can find it easily. But that's that's what I want to uh, that's what I want to see in a docu series. That would be a cool docu. Series. I talked to a woman at Chase Field like, I don't know, a year and a half ago or so, and she had been a ticket seller at the ticket booth for 25 years. Was that was that when uh, we were trying to figure out how to get the, the tickets off your phone because your phone was going to die? Yep. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly what it was, actually. I forgot That's about right. that part of the story. <laughs> That's a true story because they only do electronic story. tickets now. So Briggs' That's phone right. was nigh into death, and we were trying to figure out how to get him transferred from his phone to my phone. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's right. I'm talking to the ticket taker. <laughs> and then I bamboozled our way past the cop into the team store. Just about. 
yeah. I mean, I just talked him talked him into it, but yeah. it was great. Um, okay, I'm gonna go with mine next. And uh, uh, okay, so let me just let me just I won't preface it. I want to see uh, a docu series as well, Brad. Thank you for all right establishing that that is a possibility here. I want to see a docu series. <laughs> yeah, um, I want to see what it's like to play baseball from childhood all the way to the show in Latin America. And I want to go, I want to see, I want to see kids hitting rocks with sticks kind of stuff or like, um, like Mariana Rivera's story about, you know, playing with a cardboard Cardboard glove glove. in Panama. I want to see all, I want to see that in the first episode around Venezuela, Panama, uh, in the Caribbean, all of it. And then I want to go, uh, and each episode is like in innings and all it goes all the way to the ninth inning where we get the guys playing the bigs. That's what I want to see. I want to see what yeah. it's like to the draft. I want to see what it's mm-hmm. like uh, with the families. I want to see what it's like in training facilities. I want to see who's getting schmoozed by which uh, teams and what the scouting teams look like down there. Is it different? Is it handled differently than it is here? You know, all of it, how much is regulated, what's implied, what's under the table. I want all the dirt. I want it all to come out. And I want questions left unanswered at the end as well so that there's more research in the back. That's what I want. That's awesome, Uh, especially since the pipeline to get from, like you said, from like Little League to the bigs in the Caribbean and and all the Latin countries is so, so, so very different than it is. Here in the states than like what yep. you or i would have experienced had we yeah had the ability to do so <laughs> but, exactly yeah but yeah so that, I, that's fascinating i think that's awesome that's what i want to see what is it like there okay brad what's your, willing, what's your next one well i was gonna say i'd be willing to travel with you to make such a such a documentary <laughs> twist my arm to go to the caribbean brig okay twist it oh okay all right all right anyway Curacao? yeah you got it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you want to go to Puerto Rico? Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> all right. The next one I want to see. This one I feel like it would be difficult to make just because of trying to find information and uh, footage is essentially non existent. You would just be a bunch of interviews and photos and stuff, basically, and, and recreations. But I want I want to see something about the dead ball era because it's fascinating to me. It's nice. such it's completely different baseball. It's almost a completely different game. Right now I'm reading this book called How Baseball Happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the one I got. I was out in South Carolina and Brig actually bought that for me. He's nice enough to buy that book so that I could read it. It's taken me this long to get to it because I've been reading other things. But it's fascinating. It's really interesting learning about the origins of baseball and how different it was during the dead ball era. And I I would honestly include the very beginning of the game, like what even led into dead ball baseball, right? Right. Because one of the things it talks about is that there was a team that did a world tour similar to what the Savannah Bananas just finished up. And... Mm -hmm. uh. And everywhere they went, people were like, oh, yeah, we have a game just like this. Right. We have a bat and ball game. Yeah. Like we have cricket. Everywhere. We have rounders. Well, it, was, it, was have... Places that they, it was beyond just cricket and rounders, though. So mm. there was always somewhere some somebody was like, yeah, yeah, we got a game like this. So that, I think, is really interesting. So I would I want to see, like, the origins of baseball through the dead ball era. Right? And Very then cool. end with... End with Babe Ruth comes in, disrupts everything, and completely changes the game. Changes everything. Yeah. So that I think that wow. would be really interesting to watch. Wow. Very cool. Thank you. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know who needs to do that one is Ken. Ken Burns got to do that one. Yeah, you're probably right. He, he he's got the he's got the know how. Yeah. I like that. Well, thank you. Okay. Um. All right. My next one is a little less. Intense, actually. I want to see a documentary that shows us the evolution from wads of tobacco to mm. seeds and gum. Well, I think you could start. Just, I think you could start the evolution with cigarettes, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah, you totally could. But I mean, <laughs> I want to know who made the decisions uh, to change. W- what motivated those changes? I mean, 
we we all know the party line about you know kids mm-hmm. chewing tobacco and all that but there's got to be more to the story who are the players at the table whose righteous indignation drove this home was it like mothers against drunk driving where there was a coalition of concerned mothers that were like hey listen and major league baseball went oh man i didn't think about that like so there's there's got to be a story uh, there's probably multiple stories and they all coalesced into this wonderful change that took place. I want to see that. I would like to, and it doesn't need to be a long drawn out documentary. This is like a 30, 40 minute feature short, short form. Mm-hmm. And I bet it would be a really interesting um, like take on the whole thing. And if, and I want them to go all the way back to whoever was doing tobacco when Pappy Van Winkle was doing whiskey, right? Like start there, <laughs> start <laughs> as far back as you can get (laughs) yeah because honestly that's something i looked up a few years ago because major league baseball came out with that rule where they couldn't have um dip cans in their back pocket when fans were in the stadium you know yep so i was like so where did this whole thing even start and it turns out it was because guys didn't like that their mouth is getting dry on those sandlot fields out in the Mm. middle of nowhere where they're playing so they would chew tobacco to keep their mouth from getting dry where that huh. comes is where that originally comes from. Um, See, that's but I am, great. But I am curious, yeah, like how you what you talked about, like how did that turn into seeds? Yeah, right. And, and, and who started the seed trend? Was yeah. it a born of necessity? Was it like, well, I, I got to do something with my mouth. So what am I going to yeah. do? I don't want to be pink bubble gum. So mm-hmm. give me something else that's earthy. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. And I, I'll tell I you. Know. As a baseball coach, as somebody who's coached baseball, I eat seeds because of the stress. That's that, great. That that's like I have to have something to chew on, or else I'm going to chew my fingers or my hand, chew on my <laughs> face. And you're yelling at all the little <laughs> nine year olds. Yeah, it keeps me from doing that because I'm like, I don't want to be the fool who's yelling at a kid and spitting and has seeds shooting out of his mouth while I'm yelling. So it keeps me self level, grounded. Instead, I just bite down on it. And... <laughs> that's awesome. But, Very good okay. insight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um can i do can i do an honorable mention real quick before i go into my yeah, last one of course yeah okay so this is one that i think would again short form um okay. uh doesn't need to be more than 35 to 40 minutes maybe an hour tops absolutely tops at an hour but i want to see what it's like uh to be a groundskeeper for a year what a whole year is like like start the documentary with the last pitch of the season whether That's, it's the world mm. series or the end of the season so what do they go do do they what do they do take the field down what do they do the next day what do they do during the off season to keep that grass green how often in seattle how often are they opening the roof just to get natural rain on the grass right yeah and and what are they doing in texas when it gets scorching hot because you don't know i mean i don't know but I don't know what kind of grass they use in Arizona. Maybe you could follow several ground screws because you have so many different climates and then end, end the documentary again with the last pitch of the season of the next season. And it starts all over again. I just got chills, bro. <laughs> that made my heart pitter patter. Did it. And that's my honorable yes. mention. That's my honorable mention break. Bro, dude. That's amazing. That sounds awesome. Thank you. I'm glad you like that one. Yeah, I think that would be really cool to watch. Just because I'm always fascinated with the with the grounds crew. Because I do not have a green a green thumb at all. And our buddy Ty, we need to bring Ty on sometime and talk about being a grounds yeah, crew do. member. Because he has he was a member of the Salt Lake Bees grounds crew for a long time. First yeah. off, he's got stories. Second, I've got questions. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> so yeah, that's anywho. great. We have meant to have Ty on for sure. He's been busy. Yeah. He's got married, so he's very he's busy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, he's a heck of a journalist. So that he, doesn't he matter. is. You know, he came in. He came into the newsroom one time. I was like, "Hey, I want to write sports." I was like, "Yeah, can I just send me a sample or something? You know, whatever." And or no, I was like, "I was like, come cover this game with me." I was like, "I'll show you the ropes. You can write the story, whatever." He sent it to me. I was like, "Ty, this is better than anything I've ever, ever written in my life." He's like, no, it's not. I was like, Ty, legitimately better than anything I have or probably ever will write in my whole yeah. life. And he was 21. 
and and winging like the it first thing he yeah totally winging it so yeah uh, no he's high as you know, he's a fantastic writer a big agreed fan of Tide. all right um, Brie, go ahead with your last one then i'll do my last one after that okay sounds good i actually i went all the way on this one and i even have a title oh um i want it to be called switch but i want it to be a documentary about raising a switch hitter I want to get the parents' perspective on what it's like. Obviously, we'll get the players' perspective because they'll be mm-hmm. involved in the story, duh. But, um, you know, how did the players feel about the parenting? How did the parents make the decision? When did they spot the, tr- the talent? Um, was it something they forced? You know, how did they keep the kid motivated through all of the extra that goes in with batting on both sides of the plate? Um, Literally something- double the work. It is double the work, and it's and it starts super super young. So I want to know. I want to watch it go all the way to the top. And so I want to hear about Bernie Williams. I want to hear about Chipper Jones, uh, Roberto Alomar, Pete Rose, Eddie Murray, Francisco Lindor. Right, some of the greatest um, switch hitters ever. And I mean, obviously, you got to talk about Mickey Mantle, easily the greatest yeah, switch hitter of all the time. Okay, in my mind, yeah. But I mean, it's like that's what I I want to know. What is it like to be a parent? not just of a major league baseball player, but of a, a successful switch hitting major league baseball player. That's cool. Did Wilson bat left-handed when you were here? No, he did the next no, time. Didn't. That's right. It was the next time. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Cause he, he said something about it that day. I was like, well, let's, let's practice. <laughs> yeah. That's part bit. of what made me think of this idea actually. Was yeah, you and Wilson I like going, that. Yeah. Doing maybe, both. Maybe we'll, yeah. maybe we'll bring the camera out. <laughs> yeah. Good idea. <laughs> he probably would help to see it. Yeah, it I would. show I show Olivia her Muay Thai stuff when I take video, and she watches yeah. herself. And you know she's yeah. picking up stuff on from the third person. Yeah. I you actually know? showed him the other day. I showed him a slow motion of a Joey Gallo home run. Oh, I, was walk, I was walking him through the swing. I was like, "See, this is what I'm saying here, here, and here." And he's like, "Oh, yeah, okay, that makes that makes a lot of sense." And it was right before his last game, and Brig he and he went eight for eight his last two games. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty rad. <laughs> it's, it's super oh, rad. Really cool. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, the last one I have for you today. Okay. Um. This. So I want. I want to know what happens to a city from the time that rumors of a team leaving begin to swirl mm. to that team is established in a new city. So like right now you could start that with the A's, right? It is starting. Yeah. Yeah. Like you could start, you could start filming that today with the A's. You would come in a little bit late, but you could still do it. Um, But the story I want is the Expos becoming the Nats. Now I did find there was actually a documentary about the Expos, but I want to know what was going on in the front office. What was going on in the city for, with the Expos in Montreal when they were getting ready to move them to Washington, D.C. Yeah. And then what was going on in the receiving city? What was going on in D.C. when they're like, we're getting ready to get a Major League Baseball team where the fans like, yes, yes, we're finally getting a baseball team back at the expense of this other city, but we don't care because we're getting a baseball team. Is Was that the attitude? Or is there a little bit of sympathy to Montreal because that was Canada's first Major League Baseball team? Yeah, it was. Right? So and on a successful run at at the time of the strike, mm-hmm. so it was yeah, yeah. So That's I'm curious what idea. it's like in both of those cities uh, when a team is relocated, and then kind of the fallout in Montreal, what happened economically and things like that, and then the impact, like the economic impact that it had on DC bringing yeah. in the Nats. I'm really curious, especially since there's a team in Baltimore, just like right there. It's right there, so. Yeah, that's yeah. really interesting. I like that a lot. Cool, man. And how I much of it have was some, like what's patriotic? Up? How much of it was driven by like it's America's baseball pastime, America's pastime, America's capital city doesn't have a ball club? Like you got to know there's somebody with that agenda in there. You would think so. Um, I thought that they would have. If that was the case, though, I thought I don't know. Maybe they would have drawn more on the history and and brought back the senators, mm. right? But I don't know. I don't know. That's interesting. So you've got the You're Ottawa right. senator. I don't know. I don't, I'm not good, sure. 
good questions. See, this is why documentaries so are great because there's is. so many questions and there are answers. You just got to find them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think, I think honestly, Brick, there's a few in here that we could do. We could but... do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. <show. laughs> anyway, like Briggs said, if you want to get involved helping us get some of these projects off the ground, we actually didn't even touch on like the projects that we are planning on doing right. because for obvious reasons. Um, but if you want to help out with that, that's Patreon is the best way to do that. So jump on there. Like Brick said, five, 10, $15 uh, dollar tiers there and you get different benefits at each, but everybody gets the bullpen cut, which is something that we're incredibly proud of and have a lot of fun with between segments. It is fun. Just for you. 